Welcome to the Guns and Gavel Show, where Arizona's self-defense and firearms attorney, Tim Forshee, weighs in on the delicate balance between the law and personal protection. Learn about the legalities and realities of self-defense as he dives deep to discuss firearms laws, legal use of force, concealed carry, and home defense training. The Guns and Gavel Show starts in three, two, one. I might do one more thing. You know, I know you got limited amount of time here, but the one other thing I'd like you to address is talk to people about. I guess uh, part of our problem is a fatherless uh, society where we don't have the fathers, and also the the drugs that they're putting these kids on now. And, and almost every one of the shooters was on some sort of a psych, psychiatric drug. And I you think- know, You know, that, that. That's, uh, I, I talk about that in my book. Right. And, and that's, that's a myth, Stephen, it, it's not true. Uh, you know, when we talk about gun laws, I tell people how the gun laws working out in Mexico. How those gun laws working out in Mexico. And, and, and all of these mass murders in Mexico are not about psychotropic drugs. Uh, I, I think it's video game drugs. disinformation. Yeah. Uh, well, we've of all these mass killers that I outline in this book, all these juvenile multiple homicides, only one were we even able to confirm was on a psychotropic drug. Hmm. And and uh, and so the the idea that there are only these psychotropic drugs. We talk in here about a, a doc who says, you know, uh, uh, when you're sick you get penicillin and then you die. Did the penicillin cause the death? You know, if you have problems in America, we put you on medications and the medications don't work. Did the medication do it? You know, it, and again, yeah. around the world, they go to Wikipedia and look up worldwide homicide rates. Now click on the rate and click again to get the most violent nations on the planet. Yeah. And there's the most violent nation on the planet. We're usually about 80. Mexico is usually about nine or 10. Uh, Virgin Islands, Jamaica, El Salvador, Honduras. What's happening in Honduras? What's happening in, in Jamaica? What's happening in Mexico? How are those gun laws working out in Mexico? Right. They, they, they trap us and it's, oh, it's a psychotropic drug. No, it's them. It's the media. It's them yeah. turning the killers into celebrities. It's them doing the killer simulators given to our children. It's them feeding the sick, sick movies to our kids. You know, uh, Mike Rock in his book talks about how these killers watch a movie 50 times. All these killers have some movie that they watch 50 times. The Columbine killers watch the movie Natural Born Killers over 50 times. Prior to the 1980s, it was not possible to watch a movie 50 times. You know, we all remember Betamax and VHS and the big battle. Well, you're aging yourself, you remember that? People don't understand. There was a time if a movie wasn't in the theater, if it wasn't on TV, you couldn't watch it. And today we can watch it 50 times. And so the media desperately has to point the finger somewhere. Oh, it's the guns. It's the psychotropic drugs. Well, how the gun laws working out in Mexico? Yeah. And how those psychotropic drugs responsible for what's happening in Mexico? It's them. And, you know, so and let one me ask, example, you, let me ask tr- you a question. I'll yeah. put you on the spot. So, because I've, you know, yeah. we all have our little armchair arg- arguments about this. What can we do? I mean, you know, what, what, what have we done in the last 30 years, in the last 40 years? What have we done? Well, let's ban assault weapons. Well, first of all, let's define assault weapon. And we get into that hole, you go down that monkey hole. But we've, we put bans on certain types of firearms. We ban magazines in excess of 10 rounds. We, we ban bayonet lugs. Thank God we banned the bayonet lugs from 94 to 04. Oh, yeah. What can we do, Colonel? What, what, and Stephen, obviously you too, you've got some ideas. What can we do as a country that could turn the corner on this and make it better? Okay, and here's another factor, Tim. We are in the middle of a global epidemic of sleep deprivation. Mm. Sleep deprivation is the key factor in suicide. Teen suicides around the world have exploded. And the new factor is sleep deprivation. The best meta study on suicide says not only is sleep deprivation a key factor in suicide, it's the most remediable factor. Yeah. So <clears throat> we know that sleep deprivation is a key factor in traffic deaths and suicide. And there's a lot of data that would show one of the side effects of the video huh. games, one of the side effects of watching a movie 50 times is sleep deprivation. Huh. The video games are designed to be addictive, impossible to turn off. Right. And and they, they want to steal your time. The head of Netflix said the number one competitor is not other online providers. The number one competitor 
is sleep. The corporate policy of Netflix is to steal your sleep. They don't care that it causes heart disease and obesity and sleep deprivation is a key factor in Alzheimer's and dementia. Go online search, uh, dementia and sleep deprivation, boom, time right up. Uh, they don't care that sleep deprivation is a key factor in suicide and teen suicides have exploded worldwide. They just want to sell their product. Wow. And we got to understand there are things we can sell to adults that we cannot sell to kids. Right. All we did with tobacco was say, stop selling this stuff to children. Right. They fought all the way to the Supreme Court, sell any game to any kid at any age. So what we need first and foremost mm -hmm. is education. But second, a, a national campaign on sleep and the necessities of sleep. I got a book coming out in two years called On Sleep, The Tragic Impact of a Global Epidemic of Sleep Deprivation. Wow. But here's one thing we can do. Kind of coming up top of the hour, I got to check out. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> That the head of the prime minister, remember the New Zealand mosque massacres? Yes. Again, how those New Zealand laws go and stopping that guy yeah. getting a gun? Yeah, how those gun laws working out in Mexico? How's that working for them? But the prime minister of New Zealand said, this man did what he did to be famous. I will not give it to him. She said, New Zealand will never say his name. I remember she New said New Zealand that. will that never show his face. So she what said, if we, New what if we Zealand pass a law? will never. What if we pass yes. a law? Because yes. and people say, yes. you can't do that. It's a restriction on the First yes, Amendment. And I, I'm always quick to point out, we've been doing that for 50 years with juvenile offenders. Yes. We don't publish the name or the identity of a juvenile offender now, and everybody seems to be just fine with that. Why can't we extend yeah. that to mass murderers as well? Yeah. I, that would or cost you know, the country nothing. Mention their name one time, show us their picture one time, and after 48 hours, boom, never again. Yep. So this, and, and there you would have, okay, we understand who that person is. We see the age and background. We understand what the name is. And then, boom, they're nothing. They're nobody. It yep. becomes illegal to even say my name. Yeah. In Canada, it's illegal to say the name of a juvenile offender. Right. And about every couple of years, a Canadian kid commits his crime, and they all find out, if I do this in Canada, I become nothing. I become nobody. It becomes against the law to even say my name. That's. I think and we need boom. that here. I think we need that here. Yes, the, the, we do. Because people always, we every time there's that. another horrific shooting, you, you see everybody that are do, you're doing this. That, there's that word shooting about thoughts and prayers. Let's do something. Yeah. And then they say, well, let's ban yes. 11 round magazines. Well, why don't you just set your hair on fire and run into a wall? That's doing something. Oh. Let's do something that oh. might work. You know, I don't get it. Amen. So Amen. the last thing I want to ask you about before you go is that how do you feel about properly qualified properly background check, people who pass the same qualifications as police officers, as civilians, being able to offer free unpaid volunteer security in our nation's schools as Can a matter of federal law. What are your America? thoughts on that? Well, this, this is so important. Yeah. And then, then I got to go ahead and check out and go see Please. the dentist, right? But, uh, but um, Ohio has a program called FASTER, Faculty and Staff Training for Emergency Response. 85% of all counties in Ohio have some armed educators. Mm -hmm. Now they have to be nominated by their fellow educators. They, uh, they, they, they have to qualify at the end of a week of training at the same level as a cop, you but go. you don't walk in with that kind of skill. You gotta mm -hmm. go ahead with skills ahead of time. You gotta arrive with right. skills. And then uh, they've got some good training. So a reporter from the London Times came and took the training. He said, London Times. He said, I would have never thought I would say this, after seeing the people taking the class, after taking the class, I now support armed educators. Wow. London Times, buried on page five. I was going to say, why can't we ever, see that on page one? Ever, yeah, my God. Never that repeat be on the it Wall again. Street never repeat it again. You've wow. got to understand, they have blood on their hands. They've got to point the finger somewhere else. Yeah. We have never had, with two exceptions, we have never had a multiple homicide in a school when there was somebody in that building that could shoot back. Yeah. Now, the two exceptions were El Paso, Texas, and uh, and uh, uh, Oxford, Michigan, with cops on scene. In both cases, when the cops showed up, not another kid died. Yep. Now, Florida's got armed people, armed civilians in every school in Florida for all practical purposes. It's happened in 85% of all counties in Ohio. A judge said, that's not enough training. They can't do that. They ran through a law in the legislature to say, yes, that is enough training. How the media report it? Ohio lowers the standard to be armed in the right. schools. <laughs> but they will tell you, 
I, I, right. I find out for yourself. I think a third of all schools in Texas have some armed educators in yeah. there. We have, and I think I can say this truthfully, we have never had a multiple homicide in a school with armed educators. Yeah. If there was, we'd heard about it. Well, there Absolutely. were armed educators. In well, John, John Lott we, says the same thing. So I think your data is hard. Yes. I think that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But so, wow. so we, and it costs nothing. These educators, I had, I had an elementary school principal tell me, I was doing a, a, a regional school safety conference and uh, uh, very well received. I get standing ovation from educators on many occasions. They said, never seen educators give standing ovations and in service, right? Wow. But, but I, I had, and, and, and this is after Sandy Hook and the first one to die in Sandy Hook was an unarmed principal charging the killer. The second one to, to die was an unarmed school psychologist charging the killer. Uh, women will die for their children. They will die. And this this principal, she told me, she said, I will die for my kids tomorrow. Give me something besides my keys yeah. in my hand when that day comes. Now that Please makes hair listen, guys. Yeah. Yeah. We oh. can do it. We're doing it. You know, in California had two school districts with armed educators and California passed a law to make them stop doing that. Yeah. But in every other state across America, we're seeing more and more of it and it works. Uh, we've got, we've got universal proof as you well, John Lott's got the sure. data. Uh, you, it's hard to prove a negative, but if there was uh, armed educators that didn't work, we just sure as hell heard about it. Well, we've got 45 it's years of data from Israel And they Israel will not report well. it. Yes. <laughs> and they just refuse to report it. Yeah. You've got to understand why they have blood on their hands and they got to point the finger somewhere else. The whole anti-gun thing yeah. is an active, persistent, intentional campaign to spread the guilt away from themselves. Right. And, and, yeah. and, and it's hollow, it's empty. Not only does it, do they do harm to us, but then they turn around with their disinformation campaign and do even more harm. Yeah. So uh, uh, that you are on the well, side of the angels, my brother. I was going to say, at the risk of sounding corny, guys, uh, you guys are both doing God's work here. Two of my biggest heroes. Uh, I I just can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys taking an hour to talk with me. It means a lot. And Colonel, I feel terrible that you got to go from this horrible part of your day to go to the (laughs) dentist. That's just terrible. But uh, really, really appreciate you guys carving out time. Thank you so very much. Let's do it again. Yeah, please. God bless you you guys. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Always an hour. Thank you. And that wraps up another episode of Guns and Gavels. Join us next time to learn more about the legal use of force, personal protection, and firearms training. Show your support and hit the like and subscribe buttons to make sure you never miss an episode. Till next time, stay safe.